What makes for a more interesting discovery? Is it something that can be understood the moment you look at it? Or is it something that's much harder to interpret and explain? We think it's the latter, and we've made this video to prove our point. Each of the finds you're about to see was a huge puzzle to the people who found them, and some of them still haven't been fully explained to this very day. Archaeologists in Germany have known for a long time that there was a brutal and intense battle close to the Tolenza River some 3,300 years ago. They just don't know who fought there or what they were fighting about. A cache of previously undiscovered artifacts found on the battlefield in 2019 has only served to deepen the mystery. This is thought to be the oldest battlefield in Europe. The fight is thought to have started at the site of an ancient causeway, and it's there that this collection of 31 bronze objects was recovered from. It's possible they were once kept together in an organic container that's long since disintegrated. Among the artifacts are a bronze awl, a decorated box to be worn on a belt, a knife, and a chisel. Strangest of all are three bronze cylinders that are thought to have been used to store personal possessions. They're an unusual thing to find on a battlefield and are of a style that's only ever been seen before in the south of the country. The presence of personal items at the origin point of a battle implies that the people who fell here weren't soldiers, which begs the question of whether this was a small local dispute that got rapidly out of hand. Of all the ancient ruins in North America, those at Chaco Canyon in New Mexico are the most complete. That might make it tempting to believe they're also the best understood, but they're anything but. The site belonged to the ancient Pueblo people, who appear to have designed their buildings and the layout of the entire area in accordance with astronomical principles. It's the size of the buildings that are the biggest puzzle. They're so enormous that nothing of greater size was built anywhere in North America until the 19th century. Chaco Canyon was built during the 10th century, some 800 years earlier. The ruins of Chaco Canyon cover more than nine miles of the canyon floor, with highlights including the four-story high ruins of the Pueblo Bonito Palace. The etchings, carvings, and illustrations on the walls of some of the monuments point to the idea that the society might have been dominated by women rather than men. That's atypical of every other civilization known to have lived on the continent at the time. We have a lot of questions about Chaco Canyon, but very few answers. As we're talking about ancient ruins in North America, it would be rude to leave out the Casa Grande ruins in Coolidge, Arizona. They're among the tallest of all the American ruins of their era, and that's about as much as we can say about them with any confidence. Historians and archaeologists have no idea what they were used for. They might have been a private residence, or a grand municipal hub, or anything in between. The existence of the ruins was unknown until Padre Eusebio Francisco Quino found them during his travels across the American Southwest in 1694. It was he who gave them the name, which translates as Great House. Casa Grande was probably built around 350 years prior to the missionaries' arrival by the ancient Sonoran people. The Sonorans left behind no written language and very few monuments, which makes the site extremely difficult to demystify. Like many of the ruins of its time, it has a ball court outside it that may have been used to play the Mesoamerican ball game. The building comes complete with its own network of canals bringing water from the Gila River for agricultural purposes and markings on the upper corners of the main buildings that could have been used to track the solstice and the equinoxes. Just because they could, though, doesn't mean they were. The Qumran manuscripts are considered to be among the most important archaeological discoveries of the 20th century. You probably know them better by their more popular name the Dead Sea Scrolls. The manuscripts are so named because the first fragments of them were found in the Qumran caves of the Judean Desert, although further pieces have been found scattered around the region, including the notorious Cave of Horror in Israel. The earliest of the scrolls is around 2,300 years old. Roughly one-third of the texts are biblical in nature. 
The remainder are epigraphs and apocrypha, much of which isn't fully understood. The language used in the scrolls changes frequently. Some of them are in Hebrew, but other pieces are Aramaic or Greek. One theory is that the entire collection represents an attempt to translate the Old Testament into Greek, but it's perhaps more likely that the Dead Sea Scrolls are all that's left of the library of the ancient Qumran community. Some historians credit a Jewish sect called the Essens with the work instead. The point is that despite the scrolls being some of the world's most famous ancient artifacts, their authorship and purpose remains unknown. Let's head back to the United States of America now because it's time to check out the Blythe Intaglios in California. Anthropomorphic geomorphs of this kind appear all over the American Southwest and New Caledonia, but there are none more impressive than those at Blythe. They've been favorably compared to Peru's Nazca Lines. Aside from being impressed by the size and scale of the geoglyphs, archaeologists are at a loss when it comes to explaining their origin. Estimates of their age range between 450 years and 2,000 years. Theories about who made them are similarly varied, but most scholars feel they were most likely scratched into the ground by the Kachin or Mojave Indians. Most of the glyphs are thought to be representations of Mastamho, the creator of all life in the mythology of the aforementioned Native American peoples. The largest of the glyphs is an incredible 167 feet long. It's impossible to see the whole glyph from ground level. In fact, nobody even knew it was there until a plane passed overhead in 1932. Why would these ancient people make works of art they couldn't even see? Your guess is as good as ours. While the Blythe and Taglios attract a lot of curious attention in California, the Judacula Rock does the same in Kulawi, North Carolina. This strange carved boulder, hidden away in the mountains, is covered in enigmatic petroglyphs that have never been fully decoded or understood. This was a sacred place for the Cherokee Indians long before Europeans came to North America, but the impressions on the rock were old long before the Cherokee got there. Some estimates say they were made 4,000 years ago. The Cherokee believed that the marks were made by Joaquila, an ancient giant, as he jumped between the mountains. The most famous of the impressions is Juracula's hand, which can only be interpreted as a handprint if we accept that the giant had seven fingers. Local legends say that ghostly voices can be heard around the rock at night. Surprisingly, there's never been a full archaeological excavation of the area around the monument. The little work that has been done has uncovered quarrying tools made around 5,000 years ago. Sadly, the rock is eroding quickly and the impressions become fainter with every passing year. Officials in Jackson County are trying to come up with a way of preventing the erosion problem from getting any worse. From North Carolina, we're now making the journey to Lovell in Wyoming, where we're met with the colossal site of the Bighorn Medicine Wheel. Again, we can be reasonably sure that Native Americans created this monument, but we can't be sure of when or precisely why. The most likely explanation is that it's an astronomical calendar of some kind and would have been used to either track or predict astronomical events. The choice of Medicine Mountain as a place to build the monument is a strange one. It's 10,000 feet above sea level and spends most of the year covered in snow. All of the stones would have needed to be carried here by hand. That wouldn't be an easy task now, let alone hundreds of years ago. Medicine wheels of this design have been used or appropriated by everyone from the Wiccans and Pagans to New Age spiritualists. The fact that there are 28 spokes on this one probably isn't an accident because there are 28 days in the lunar calendar. Even today, the monument can be used to predict the summer solstice with total accuracy. Let's turn around and go back to California to check out the Hemet Maze Stone. The story of its discovery is a strange one. A rancher found the stone on his land in 1914 and initially thought it was a recent work of vandalism, but he was wrong. The carving on the stone was already a minimum of 500 years old then. 
which would make it at least 600 now. He'd somehow overlooked it for the whole time he'd been living there. What makes this design so different from all of the other petroglyphs in North America is its design. Looking at it, you can't help but notice the similarities to the distinctive shape of the swastika. Back when the design was first etched onto the rock, the swastika wouldn't have carried the same connotations as it does today. It was a Buddhist symbol of divinity. The Native Americans who made this carving would never have met a Buddhist, though, so its meaning in this context is unknown. Some similar but not identical symbols were found on other rocks close to here during the 20th century. One of the most outlandish theories about the symbols is that they were etched by survivors of an ancient Chinese shipwreck, but there's no evidence to support that idea. Still, it's a nice theory. When the influence of the ancient Roman Empire began to decline in Europe, several other cultures and civilizations tried to expand and assert dominance. One of them was the Goths. They were only around for the blink of an eye in historical terms, but that doesn't make them insignificant. The Goths were the first Germanic people to accept Christianity, a fact that led to the creation of the Codex Argentius. The silver artifact is still with us today and is considered the most magnificent of all the religious manuscripts of the medieval era. The Codex is the first translation of the Bible into the native language of the Goths, a task thought to have been ordered by King Theodoric the Great. The process necessitated the invention of a whole new Gothic alphabet. The king wouldn't allow the previous runic alphabet to be used because he thought it was connected to paganism and therefore unworthy. The codex went missing after the king's reign came to an end and eventually turned up at Verdun Abbey in the 16th century, more than 1,000 years later. Nobody knows where it was for all those years. We're back to mysterious markings made on rock now, and this time it's Dighton Rock in Berkeley, Massachusetts, USA. The origin of these markings has been the subject of fierce debate within the archaeological and historical community for decades. At previous times, they've been credited to Native American tribes, lost Norse sailors, Portuguese travelers, and even the ancient Phoenicians. The mystery predates America's existence as an independent country. Reverend Cotton Mather wrote of the markings on the rock and their mysterious origins as long ago as 1690. Of all the different origin stories, two are considered to be plausible. One is that they're the work of Native Americans. Although it's odd that they're so different in design from the usual inscriptions and glyphs made by Native American people. The other is that they're the work of Miguel Cotoreal a Portuguese explorer. Even now, though, you'll still find conspiracy theorists making outlandish claims about Chinese sailors reaching America in the early 15th century and marking Dighton Rock as proof. The artifact itself is now in a museum to protect it from the elements. The legends and folklore of Scotland's ancient clans are long and complicated. There are many different beliefs contained within that folklore, from the rational to the very irrational. The MacLeod clan's fairy flag probably belongs to the latter category. Today, the tattered flag is inside Dunvegan Castle on the island of Skye. According to clan members, it's a magical item with the power to heal and protect whoever carries it. Not even the clan's elders know where the flag comes from, it's clearly extremely old. Some stories even go as far as saying it was carried in the Middle East during the times of the Crusades. The most fanciful tale is that it was literally weaved by fairies, hence its name. There might be something to say for the Crusade theory, though. The silk used in the manufacture of the flag can be traced to Syria at least 1,600 years ago. That would be too late for the Crusades, but there's nothing to say that this kind of silk wasn't already in use at an earlier time. The key piece of mythology about the flag is that if the lives of the MacLeod clan are threatened, the flag is to be unfurled and waved three times. Legions of fairies would then come to their aid and destroy their enemies. That doesn't seem very fairy-like. Is the 
tooth of the Buddha, really contained within the walls of the Temple of the Sacred Tooth Relic in Kandy, Sri Lanka. We suppose that's a question of religious conviction. The whole stunning temple is built around a tiny artifact that bears an ancient tooth. That much is fact. Everything else is conjecture, but here's the story. Legend has it that the tooth was acquired by the Sri Lankan royal family several centuries ago. The monarchy entrusted a secretive community of holy men with the tooth, and they moved and concealed it all over the country for hundreds of years before, apparently then getting bored of that and building a temple. The tooth, or a tooth at least, is clearly visible in a golden stupa within the temple's walls. The temple has been damaged by vandalism and war repeatedly over the passing of the years, but the tooth itself always survives. The Sri Lankan government has consistently refused to allow any scientists to study or test the tooth, so its true provenance will never be known. That doesn't stop thousands of people from coming to see it every year, though. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!